Hi guys, Rick Malava here with uh, a little short tutorial I thought I'd throw together that uh, could hopefully uh, help some folks out that are interested in hard surface modeling and uh, today I'm going to look at uh, beveling versus smoothing. Um, I have this uh, base object here, it has a total of 26 polygons in it. Uh, the way I created it is pretty simple. If I just go and create a, uh, a polygon primitive cube and I just did a couple of extrusions on it. I grabbed the bottom here and pulled it out and then I grabbed this face right here and uh, pulled it out and then I went in and grabbed these faces through here and just pulled those out and that's how I got to the base shape alright so um, first let's look at, uh, at some simple beveling if I start with this guy it's got uh, 26 polygons in it if I take this whole surface and just simply bevel the whole thing uh, I call that the lazy man's bevel. Rather than just grabbing the edges I, the, that uh, uh, actually would be visible in a bevel, I mean these inner edges uh, aren't really turning a corner, so beveling them is just generating extra polygons. Uh, but because of Maya's uh, uh, beveling algorithm, sometimes it's actually uh, better to just go ahead and bevel all the edges rather than specifically try to bevel uh, the edges that will be visible and I'll demonstrate why that's an issue in Maya uh, very shortly. So uh, just doing the poor man's bevel on this uh, sorry about that, <coughs> I had to clean my glasses off anyway uh, let's see so where was I at? There's uh, 26 polygons in this guy and then I took this guy and I did what I call a poor man's bevel, I just grabbed the entire object and threw a bevel on it with a beveling level of 4 I tend to either use a chamfer, which is just one, one beveled edge, just enough to catch the light. Uh, I'll use a level of two if I want to actually have a proxy model that can stand up without beveling or without smoothing. And then if I need additional uh, uh, smoothing, I can take that same beveled object and smooth it as well as uh, uh, and, and use it in a higher resolution and closer shot. <coughs> and I'll, I'll demonstrate that next. But right now with four edges beveled and all these inner ed edges also beveled, it's 650 polygons and I think, uh, I have a tendency to prefer uh, beveling in a lot of cases. I think this uh, soft frosted edge here uh, looks more like a surface that was uh, cast and then these edges were milled to give you this uh, rounded edge. Uh, appearance here. I think it looks more natural and I, uh, in this particular case I prefer beveling over smoothing. If I go to this next example here, this is the same model and all I did without uh, manually beveling or moving any of these other edges around, I just went in and added support edges around the whole model and it comes out to 234 polygons, uh, but without smoothing it doesn't look any different than the non-smoothed model. So if I come in here and I throw a smooth on it with the smooth preview key, you can see that the number of polygons jumps up tremendously. It's 3,744 3, polygons uh, and it has the same relative level of, smooth, of uh, smoothing around these edges as this uh, just, just beveled version right here which has a total of 650 polygons. So almost three times, uh, I'm sorry, almost five times fewer polygons in this version than the smoothed version. And if I turn off smoothing on this version I can't really use this uh, I can't really use this in a scene because it'll looks, it basically looks no different than the, uh, than the unsmoothed version. Uh, whereas if I come into uh, uh, to this guy, unsmoothed it looks just fine and it really doesn't need a smooth thrown on it for any scene. The other, the other advantage is if I wanted to uh, loosen up the, the curvature, the tightness of these curves, I can just, uh, with history still on the model, I can go back to my bevel node and I can just manually offset that and I can get a much nicer smooth on the model on the edges and uh, and it's uniform throughout the whole model. If I wanted to do the same thing on this model I'd have to come in and, uh, and spread out these edges uh, so that it rounds out the smoothing. If I grab this edge to demonstrate Well, I don't know what they did with the latest version of Maya but sometimes it's a real chore to pick edges uh, I'm finding uh, but in any event if I slide that edge and I grab this edge and I slide it 
and I throw smooth on the model again, you can see you get a, lo a much looser curve around here. But you have to go through every one of these support edges and spread them out, try to spread them out evenly. Uh, you can see the difference in the time savings you have with a uh, with just a bevel here. I can just go to the bevel node and I can change the I can refine that the tightness of those edges very uniformly and very quickly. I can make them very very soft, or I can come in and make them very very tight. Okay, so that's that's one of the reasons why I prefer beveling for a lot of my hard surface work. Um, the next example here shows how you can take a model with the same uh, relative density as, uh, as this particular model right here, 234 uh, polygons. I took the same standard model, I threw a poor man's bevel on the whole thing, right, which is basically a level, uh, but I put, uh, uh, where's the note, there it is, I put two segments. So uh, my beveling uh, level of is, uh, is two segments. And when you do that, it's the same thing as going around this model and throwing in all the support edges that you need. So once again, it saves you a lot of time because you can just pick the model and just hit uh, uh, bevel on the entire model and throw two segments on it. And it's the same thing as if you took a poly surface and manually went around and threw uh, uh, control edges around the whole thing. So it's a time saver. The other advantage of this is I can take this model right here and without even smoothing it, it looks it's it's ready for use in a scene. I mean, if I had a low resolution scene, this would give me a good solution. It's 234 polygons, and then if I actually needed to smooth it for for s some reason to to get rid of the fastening, if you were to get very close on this, I could just hit a smooth on it, and it looks exactly the same as this model. In fact, it actually looks a little bit well. That's because I smoothed out that corner, but uh, <coughs> so that's the advantage of that. And once again, like I said, I can come back into this model with history, and I can either increase the number of segments. I can throw four in here. Oops. I can throw four segments in here, and then I can grab this offset value, and I can, I can change the, uh, the overall smoothing on the whole object. Right now, you're seeing some faceting. That's because the entire model is hard. If I throw soft edges on the whole thing, those edges smooth out really well. And this is actually a good time to point out one of the other things that comes up when you bevel sometimes. This upper surface now isn't completely planar, so if you get really in close here, you can see there's sometimes some, some odd artifacting that happens. But if I, you can solve that by just going in. I think I've demonstrated this before. Uh, you can force Maya to think this whole thing is planar by just pay, picking all of these surfaces. that should be should be planar basically everything except for the uh, for the hardened edges or for the smoothed edges so all of those and then just uh, four more those two and these two and you just throw a harden on harden edge on all those planar surfaces and now if I come back out and uh, go to object mode, you can see, there you go, looks really nice, the planar surfaces are planar, and you get that nice frosted effect around all these, uh, all these edges, some of these are still hard here, that's why that's, I must have accidentally selected those, if I just come in and select these inner edges and soften them, there you go, now you get that, that nice effect, I've got one edge right around here that's still hard, that shouldn't be, Oop, no, it just shouldn't be hard in here. Same thing down here. I don't want to noodle around too long in here because I don't want to turn this into a 20 minute spiel. And I got a couple more things I want to demonstrate, but I'll just show if I smooth in those, smooth those edges out. So if you strategically uh, smooth the normals out on, on these things, there you go. You can get a very nice effect. And now I can come in and uh, just grab that bevel node and just adjust the. Uh, the offset and you can get a nice effect and like I said back at uh, the original if you set your bevel level your segments to, t to 2 you get the same effect as if I was to just go in and throw support edges around this thing and uh, it's actually usable and here's a good example of that artifacting I was, dis I was just describing if I come in here since this is going to be uh, seen from a distance if I just grab the whole model and harden all the edges on it all of those artifacts go away when the surfaces 
are all hardened. And uh, so there you go. That's uh, that's one of the things. Now, if I wanted to be more efficient and didn't want to bevel carry all of these support edges through through the whole model, uh, what I could do is take my original model that I have right here. I'll just duplicate it and pull it up. And this is going to demonstrate something that you have to be aware of when you're using Maya's uh, bevels. Maya's beveling algorithm is old, and uh, it's quite frankly not very good. If I grab these edges, because they're going to have exposed corners, so I'm going to want those to be smooth. Every place where two surfaces meet, I want to smooth, or I want to uh, bevel. Uh, from the top, if I select all, basically everything but these inner edges. I could actually just select everything and then deselect. That's faster. Okay, so now I just have two edges on the back that don't have any edges that meet at an angle, so I don't need these guys beveled. So now I have everything that needs to be beveled selected. Arguably, I don't need that edge beveled. Okay, so that's everything I need to bevel. If I throw a bevel on this, though, This is what I call a chamfer, just a one segment, and if I reduce the bevel so it's not so over the top, there you go. You got a nice bevels to catch the lights. These chamfers work really well for hard surface modeling. And if I basically throw a hardened edge, since it's a chamfer, you really want to see the edge, the facets. So I just basically pulled out these corners now that I've thrown a hardened surface on the whole thing. And it looks really good. And Maya does a good job with one segment. But as soon as I come in here and I try to increase the segmentation level, and let's say just bump it up to two, right? These outside edges are fine, but if you get into this internal edge here, Maya sort of loses its mind. I've got, you can see I've got an open edge right here, so if I go into face mode, you can see I've got a whole face that it's generated here, and if I delete it, I've got a hole in the model right here. So now if I take this edge and I do a fill, Okay, now I've got a solution, but I got a triangle here, and I got a quad here, and and uh, you know I got kites, and it's just that Maya's solution is is really bad. And then you got to go around and find all of the places where Maya has screwed this up, and manually go in and fix it. To have to go around your model and f look for all of these areas where Maya's basically screwed up. That's why when I don't do um, just just bevel the whole model, and I try to, to pick, just pick edges that are required. Uh, in most cases, I will stick with a uh, segmentation uh, or a beveling level uh, for segments. I'll stick to usually uh, just one, uh, which is effectively a chamfer. It manages to do chamfers uh, pretty well. Uh, and uh, and maintains good geometry and like I said from a distance here this this part looks looks very nice it catches catches the ice here, uh, the the light very nicely and it only uses 79 polygons versus uh, if I go to this one and I reduce its bevel level to one segments to one so we're comparing apples to apples this one is uh, 106 polygons oops I just smoothed it accidentally. So this is 106 polygons with a chamfer on it. And uh, once again, I have to do the trick of picking the whole thing and harden all the edges, and all of those artifacts go away. Uh, so there you go, 100 and some polygons. And I'm actually carrying the, uh, the beveling information through the whole model. Uh, so it's not bad. It's about a little less than double. Uh, it's only 20 more polygons uh, to do the whole thing versus just doing what you need to do. And the advantage of this method is I can come in and I can increase the segments to beyond uh, just a chamfer. And, uh, and it doesn't create any crazy geometry uh, that gets created if you try to just pick the minimum number of edges. So there you go. Uh, the advantage of using bevels over smoothing, I think you get uh, a much more natural look. You have, uh, uh, it's much faster to control the, the amount of uh, curvature throughout your entire model, keep it uniform, uh, rather than having to, to manually move uh, control edges around. You can use the base geometry without smoothing. If you use a segmentation level of uh, two, 
uh, you can actually get the same uh, number of support edges as if you had gone through the regular model and just manually added the support edges, but you get the added advantage that uh, the model can be used uh, uh, immediately without smoothing and still uh, show the light, plus you have the advantage of being able to control the thickness of the, uh, or the amount of curvature and all of the beveled edges. So there you go. I hope you found this, uh, this helpful, and uh, uh, beveling, don't be afraid of it. Thanks a lot.